You guys ready for another meeting? Yeah. All right. Are you benefiting from these meetings? Oh, yes. yes. Good. Let me explain a little bit, of, a couple things to you about some of the service we do and how it relates to the spine. So, does anybody know what this is? The pelvis. It's the pelvis. So it was these bones right here. Everybody feel your hips, where your belt goes. That's actually these bones, and the hips are down here. Okay, so you're feeling these bones. That's your ilium, your iliac crest. The bone in the middle is your tailbone. <coughs> Anybody ever break their tailbone? No. Very painful. I, we had a girl who was whitewater rafting, and she, or she was tubing, and got in some rapids. And the, you know, when you look at it from the side, if you take this like that and put it like that, it's usually curved like this, kind of like that. And hers was like this. Uh, oh. Crack. Oh, no. It was not fun. She didn't sit down for six weeks. <laughs> or without it, not without a donut. But anyway, this is an important structure because there's a spinal canal running from the brain all the way down through the spinal cord, or the, through the spine, and it gets down and terminates down in here. So what's in your spinal canal? Nerves. Nerves. Fluid. 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 What kind of fluid? Spinal fluid. Spinal fluid. What's it for? It's actually cerebral. Spinal fluid. Cerebral means brain or head. So it's cerebral everything. spinal fluid. To keep everything in communication. Your brain is the center of your body. It's, it's not, some people call it computer. I call it a transmitter or a, a relay station. But what it does is it's the most vulnerable part of your body, right? With that, if that doesn't work, nothing works. So if your brain dies, the body dies. That's how they declare people dead. They used to do it by heart, but then they could start people up again. So it's soaking in fluid. It's like floating in fluid, the whole thing, all the way down. Now, when you have fluid and you have it up here and you let it spill down here, how does it do that? What power brings it down? Gravity. Yeah, what power brings it back up? Heart. Blood heart. Pressure. Not heart. Totally separate from that system. It's a whole separate system. Would you like to know? Yes. Okay. These are three different bones. One, two, three. We'll mark them so you can remember. One, two, three. Three, they form joints. So this is called the sacrum, and these are called iliums. What are the joints they form, Nicole? What do what? What joints do these form? SI joints. The SI meaning the sacroiliac joint. These are very large weight-bearing joints. So here's your ilium, and here's your sacrum, and you can imagine the joint looks like that when you're looking from the side, but it looks like that when you're looking from behind. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. These are large weight-bearing joints. They're probably the primary weight-bearing joints in your body. In fact, remember I told you when you move your weight-bearing joints, it programs your brain? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. There's nerve endings yeah. in your joints? Well, there's more in the SI joints than any other joint. So they're very important. So picture this. When you walk, let's say this is, this is my ilium and this is my other ilium, and I'm going to bring them out here. When you take a step forward, your ilium goes like that. And when you take the other way, it goes like that. Right? So the sacrum in the middle gets pushed to one side, then it gets pushed to the other side. Then it gets pushed to one side, then it, what's that doing? It's pumping what? The cerebral. cerebral spinal fluid back to your brain. So there was a guy named Roger Spurry who won a, who won a Nobel Prize for discovering that 90% of your brain's stimulation and your brain's nutrition comes from movement of the spine. Do you understand that? Yeah. So if you're sedentary, how does it get back up there? Then you're just too stupid to get up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, that's a problem. When you're sedentary, um, it can cause a lot of different problems, and that's one of them. But if that sacrum, you ever notice if you're standing still, you don't just stand like this. If you're in the military, you do. But what happens is you, you move a little bit. Now, when I move, what joint am I moving? Yes. The SI joints. And what am I doing? Pumping. pumping fluid. That's why you do that. That's why it's hard to stand still. That's why people go like this. They're pumping the SI, and that's why they walk. And that's why some people get up and go like this, because they're trying to get that SI moving. Also in there is a disc. The disc is right above here. The disc is a tough pad with a gel center. What's the main ingredient of that tough pad with a gel center? Water. So how's the water get in? Movement. It, well, you couldn't put a blood vessel in there, right? Let's say the disc is here. So here's the disc, right? Are we going to put a blood vessel in there? No. 
Why would that, why would that not work? They mix together. No, because this is a soft structure. And what happens if you park your car on the garden hose? Cuts, cuts off the flow. So we don't have blood flow to there. The blood flow goes to the outside of the disc, just like in all the joints. And how do you get the blood flow into the disc? Movement. Movement. Movement is life. Movement keeps your body going. What's the old saying? If you don't use it, Exactly. So when you're moving, you're not only pumping the disc up, you're also pumping cerebral spinal fluid back to the brain. That's good. So if some, like, say somebody's like confined to a wheelchair. Yep. One of the major problems with those people. They usually go to therapy, and they're getting them out of therapy, and they're rolling around, they're moving around, because they will have parts of their spine dehydrated. Mm -hmm. I looked at an x-ray of a patient who but, came in with, go ahead. But is that affecting their brain function? Like, yeah, there's that... There's that Weird guy Hawking or something like that. Stephen Hawking. Stuck in a wheelchair and he like, can't move his body. He's right. Paralyzed. So paralyzed. that's not the only source of stimulation to the brain. And there's a, a phenomenon where if you take away somebody's sight, what usually happens to their sense of smell and their hearing? It gets better. You yeah, compensate some other way. Yeah. That's what he did. Gotcha. However, he did not have that type of, there, that thought process, that brain pattern wasn't there for him because he wasn't moving. It was when he was born, but he yeah. lost it later. Yeah. That's one of the problems with somebody who becomes paralyzed they lose that stimulation to the brain. They also lose that pumping of fluid to the brain. Mm. Do you understand that? Yeah. So there's another complication with it too though. Um, <coughs> what attaches also into that structure? The legs. The femurs, the right. So you got the legs, the femurs, and they kind of look like this. And you got a bone here, and it looks like this, and it comes down, and it forms what joint? The knee, the knee joint, right. So what happens is, are those bones straight? No, that's called Q angle. And there's a proper Q angle for these joints to function properly. So when you look at the knee, it's got to have the right angle. Otherwise, it's just like putting more weight on one side than the other. When somebody has a knee problem, 85% of the time, the middle of the knee will degenerate faster than the outer part of the knee. And that changes the whole angle of the knee and it also causes pain. So if you have pain, what do you do? Don't use it. Don't use it, what else do you do? Use the right, what else do you do? Rest. What does the average American do? Pain meds, pain meds. <laughs> right. If you're able to open that, if you're able to put a brace on that knee and open that space up, guess what instantly goes away? Pain. 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 So they'll take less? Drugs. Drugs. So people who are in natural health care tend to rely on braces like this. That's what Azon does. Azon has a brace that when you put it on a knee, right, it's got a little thing on the side here, and you can actually calculate it to open up the middle side or the outer side, depending upon what their x-ray shows, right? Mm -hmm. So if the knee degenerates in the middle, they can actually put a brace on somebody that opens it back up. When you guys put a brace on somebody's knee, what do they usually say when they first get it on? Uh, they usually experience pain, pain relief either instantly or within the first hour. Do you see and that? They can walk around and they're like, oh, this doesn't hurt to walk. And the brace allows them to function, right? So um, that's why we do a lot with bracing. So with the disc, one of the things, the, the braces that they sell for the, the back problems, the back braces where you pull the straps, it actually puts pressure up that way. So it decompresses the disc. So what we do in our clinic is we tell them wear it for a half an hour in the morning and a half an hour in the afternoon. And then the second week we say wear it for an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. And when you have pain in your back, when you put a back brace on, most of it goes away. So who wouldn't like this idea? Drug companies. Drug companies. So we just got an article today from Rich Sanders. Everybody know who Rich Sanders is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's an attorney. And he actually is in, um, he has a, an office that has attorneys in Florida and in Georgia, but he actually represents clients all over the country. And he just sent us this this morning, and I'm gonna pull it up, so bear with me. And he said this, he said, the OIG, which is the Office of the Inspector General, who is that? Government. What part of government? FDA. FDA? Nope, Medicare. Uh -huh. So the Office of the Inspector General is 
has recommended that its Medicare contractors to recover portions of overpayments made to providers for claims that are uh, of the following period, 2013 to 2016. They're asking to go back and get money because they did things that they think they weren't really supposed to do. Like, for example, they say they talk about braces. Wow. Take money back for prescribing braces. What are they trying to do? Mm. Get people to do what? Drugs. Stop Drugs. buying braces, <coughs> right? Why would our government do that? It's not our government, it's the individuals in the government that are doing it. You can buy individuals, and if individuals run a government, you can buy them off and they can start doing stuff like this. How do you see all this to be able to figure out where the brace goes and if they have degeneration and if they have x-ray, right? What was the first profession in the world to use x-ray? Chiropractic. Chiropractic. X-ray was invented in 1895. Um, there was a guy named Rentkin who realized that if he put a certain amount of electricity into a piece of certain metal, that it sent out radiation, and when he had a sensitive film there and his wife was reaching over to get something, they could actually see the bones in her hand on the film. That's funny. That's a German word for x-ray. Yeah, Rentgen. Exactly. Rentgen. Yeah, well, that's... So, that was in 1895, the same year as what was discovered. What was the question? That was discovered in 1895, the same year as what else was discovered? Chiropractic. Chiropractic was discovered in 1895. So by 1910, Palmer School of Chiropractic was teaching doctors how to use x-ray as a tool to look for arthritis to see where they had problems so they could fix it. When did the American Medical Association start to use x-ray? 1917. What was happening in 1917? Americans went over to World War I, and they were looking for what? Bullets. Bullets. So that the, we were almost a whole decade ahead of the medical profession in using x-ray. When they compare chiropractic students to medical students in reading x-rays, who do you think wins? Chiros. When they compare chiropractic students to medical doctors, who do you think wins? Chiros. 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 When they compare chiropractic students to radiologists, that are doctors that specialize in looking at x-rays, who wins? Chiros. It's a tie. But when they compare chiropractic radiologists to medical radiologists, we blow them out of the water because it's our baby. So Medicare also said this. Back when I was first practicing, they said, if you're gonna treat a Medicare patient, you cannot do it unless you have an x-ray to document the subluxation. And by the way, we're not gonna pay for the x-ray. Yeah. Oh. So I had, to take, I had to have an x-ray, but I couldn't get paid for it. So what did we do? Cash, Cash or we just took it? Just took the x-ray, So because if they came back, so where's the x-ray and we don't have it, well, we have to pay all the money back. So it'd be cheaper to just take the x-ray. Um, but then what a lot of chiropractors started doing was they started sending the patients out for x-ray because the chiropractic license, that we're a doctor and we can diagnose. We've passed that test. The US government and every state in the country has recognized that a chiropractor is a primary port of entry doctor and we can diagnose so we don't have to have somebody over check us. And within our scope of practice is chiropractic and exercise and nutrition and x-ray. So here's what Medicare said this week. They said, one of these things that are being overutilized is x-ray. <laughs> Medicare does not recognize that a chiropractor has a license that can take x-rays. So we're going to go back to all the medical doctors who took their x-rays and take the money back. Hmm. That just From came out. MDs? from the radiology centers. If a chiropractor said, well, I don't get to pay for it, so you have to get down to this x-ray place, I'll write out what I need and get these x-rays taken. Now Medicare is gonna go back to those radiology places and say, this is an order from chiropractor and we don't recognize an order from chiropractor, so we want all the money back for your x-rays. What are they trying to do? They're trying to sever that line. They're trying to get the medical doctors pissed off the chiropractors yeah. because we're getting a little too chummy. Yeah. Because why? Mm. We're integrating. We're integrating. So what they're doing is they couldn't squeeze out the chiropractors, so now they're trying to squeeze out the medical doctors who will be working with the chiropractors. Guess who is completely unaffected by this? AMI. AMI. Why? Who orders our x-rays? The, the medical person. <laughs> we say to all the chiropractors, stop ordering the damn x-rays. Teach these people how to order x-rays. And we go to nurse practitioners at the training. Okay, nurse practitioners, raise your hand. Everybody here is a nurse practitioner. Raise your hand. Okay. Now, every one of you know how to take x-rays. Raise your hand and no hands go up, okay? Every one of you know how to read x-rays, raise your hand, and no hands go up. Every one of you know how to order x-rays, raise your hand, and they all look around and no hands go up. <laughs> so we teach them. That's one of the things AMI does. 
We teach them how to order x-rays. When we do the training, we tell them, here's a typical series that you would do, and here's why you'd want to see it, and here's the joints you're looking at, and here's what you're trying to do. So we teach them how to do it. It's within their scope, and the Medicare is going to pay if they do it. So anybody who's following our advice is immune from that. That is very awesome, isn't it? Yeah. And I've been teaching that for two decades. And chiropractors have been yelling at me, no, 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 but I'm the best, and I'm the guy who built the practice, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> basically how it goes. Shut up, pull your bootstraps up, and start doing it this way. You'll still get paid for it, you'll get more people well, and you won't have to give the money back, because that's the most expensive short-term loan you'll ever get, is a loan from an insurance company. And Medicare, forget about it. That's like sell your soul to the devil. Do you understand that? Yep. So one of the reasons we're so stringent on our systems is because of stuff like that. Our, our uh, clients don't know this. They're going to walk into a minefield. They know there's scary stuff about it, and we talk to them and say, yeah, but we've been through the minefield. We know this stuff before it's coming. We already know this is coming. Everybody who's following our advice, any client we have that's not integrated right now is going to pay money back. If we have a client that signed on with us in the last year, and they were doing this from 2013 to 2016, they're going to owe that money back. Unless they did what we told them to do. Start a medical clinic, keep your other one going, bring this one live. When this starts making more than this one, shut this one down. Because if they're shut down, they don't have to pay anything back. Yep. <laughs> There's a reason why we teach these guys everything we teach them. Do you understand that? Yep. Yeah. Colleen and I have been through wars in this game. We've been audited by Medicare, by Aetna, by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Pennsylvania, Blue Cross Blue Shield of, 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 of uh, Tennessee. Um, we've been through every, United Healthcare. Every possible thing you could possibly imagine, we've been through it. And that's why we teach things the way we do, because there's a reason for it. We've been through the woods. We came out okay on the other side. And now we're turning around and telling the people, don't walk down that path. I know it looks nice and rosy. This is the path you want to be on. So the coaches, you get some resistance. Well, I like doing this path. I've been doing it. Look, look, kiddo, I've been in practice for 15 years. I know what path I want to walk down. You sound familiar? A little bit. Yeah. Well, you just go, well, that's really nice, but you've never been through this section of woods, and Mike and Colleen have. So go the way you want, but we're telling you to go this way. Do you understand that? Yeah. yeah. It's really, really going to position us even better. I hate to say it, that's a crime. And I said to Colleen when she read that to me this morning, we came back from, we are grabbing lunch, and she's reading this to me, and I was like, son of a bitch, I'm going to Washington. Whether I get invited or not, I'm going to Washington, because that pisses me off. We're the profession that started using that tool. We know it better than anybody. Every time we're compared, we do better. And now the guys who do x-rays for us just ask them to do it, because we don't get paid, are going to have to pay money back? That's bullshit. In my opinion, that's oh, bullshit. Yeah. It's nothing but, but here's the good news. When you corner a rat, what does it do? Tax. It fights back. Usually a rat runs until you corner it. Then it turns around and gets ready to fight. So it looks like we're cornering these guys because they're trying to hit us where it hurts. And the stupid idiots don't even know <laughs> that what we're doing, which is the ones that are pissing them off, won't even be affected by it. They're going to push guys in integration in droves. That's going to be what happens. So can we help grow this business a little more? Yeah. Can, we, can we get more guys doing this model yeah. and winning and helping patients get better? Yeah. yeah. That's the plan. That's why we're doing this. And that book, I might put another chapter in that book. I might. Just, I'll cool down first, and then I'll think about it. But man, that pissed me off this morning. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yes. Do you guys have any questions about this? Yeah, so the, the Q angle is what exactly? The Q angle is the angle of the femur in relationship to the 90 degrees on the ground. And so, in other words, either your Q angle is, is, is correct or it's off in that your knee, your, your legs come in or go out. Well, if you look, look at me. Sorry, guys. See my legs? <laughs> yeah. Okay. My pelvis is wider than my knees are right now. So it's definitely going to be going in an angle. And the way the knee joint's designed, it's is that exact angle so that when the tibia comes up, the tibia is going to have a level plateau. And it's pretty much shaped just like that. Right? But if I start to get knock-kneed, 
it starts to degenerate on one side. Or if I get bow-legged, it degenerates on the other side. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you understand that? So if something's out in your hips, then it's going to affect your Q angle. If something's out in your neck, it'll affect here. Yep. If it's out here, it'll affect here. If it's out here, it'll affect here. If it's out here, it'll affect here. That's called a kinetic chain. Yeah. So one thing that Nicole mentioned, because she hears this a lot, is people will take x-rays of the bad side. When a patient comes in and says, my right knee hurts, what x-ray do you want to take? Yeah. Both. 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 Because 35% of the time, this knee will be degenerated more than the one that hurts. Why? <coughs> you start offloading on that side, you don't realize you're doing it, you start hurting the good side, and all of a sudden the good side is giving you problems. So what we do is, how do you figure that out? X-ray. So we take x-rays to see which one's worse, and we help the, the, the patient make a decision. You need both knees injected, or you need one knee injected, or whatever it is. And then we do the rehab. That's why it all works so importantly together. See, if you only worked on the knee, and that's um, unfortunately the biggest complaint I have in medicine. Somebody comes in with a, let's say it's a right knee, and the right knee hurts, they're going to do everything they can for the right knee. And that's not holistic. Holistic means looking at the whole body. Do you understand that? Yep. Yes. So what I would do is I would look at the knee and the other knee and the hips and the pelvis and the spine and where the head is. So track with me on this. You guys know who Quasimodo was? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The hunchback in Notre Dame? Yeah. So I'm going to do my imitation of Quasimodo. Okay, you ready? So he was the hunchback in Notre Dame. Did he walk around like this? No. Or did he walk around like this? So there's a reflex in your brain called the writing reflex. And what that means is you will always try to write your eyes with the horizon. So if you do this to your back, you're going to do this to your neck. So it's been proven without a shadow of a doubt, everything that happens to your back will eventually happen to your neck. So that's why chiropractors tend to be more holistic. They treat the whole spine because they understand these kinetic chains. Sometimes if we nail it right and we get the one joint that's really bad, all of a sudden the other ones start feeling better because they start walking normally again. Does that make sense? Yeah. But yeah. sometimes they're so bad, we'll have to say to a patient, you need both knees injected, or you need this knee injected and this hip, or this hip and this hip and this, and whatever it is. But that's how we look at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How am I doing on time? Are you? Joanne. What is the name of the disc above the sacrum? The disc above the sacrum. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the L5-S1 disc. Because sacrum is S, and L5 is lumbar. lumbar. There's five lumbars. And there's literally one sacrum. But when you're born, interestingly enough, it looks like that. They are five distinct separate bones. And what happens? They grow together. If you looked at a, a, if you looked at a one-year-old's <laughs> pelvis, if you looked at their children's pelvis on an x-ray, it would look like this. And I remember the first time I looked at an x-ray like that, I'm like, I got a Martian here. <laughs> and what happens is, this is cartilage. This is cartilage. Mm -hmm. Why are we born that way? If we were born with solid bones, we'd all be this tall. <laughs> so we have to grow. These are growth centers. They're all growth centers. And Your bones, look, the, the bones would look like this. <laughs> huh? So nobody, nobody would ever get out of the mother. That would be rough. So, that's how it works. So you have to grow. You ever hear a doctor say, oh, we're worried about, you know, your little kid, I don't know, I had five brothers, right? So some, one of us is always going to the hospital with a broken bone. <laughs> and I remember hearing this, like, well, we've got to make sure it's not the growth plate. I'm like, going, what's well, a growth plate? Well, that's a growth plate. Mm -hmm. That's a growth plate. They're growth plates. It's they, so they can grow. Uh, girls fuse quicker than guys, usually mid to early teens, and guys are usually mid to late teens. Um, it's different for everybody, but it's usually somewhere between 15 and 20, wouldn't you say? So, yeah. yeah. Girls are faster. So, yes? One question that might be another lecture, but if I were to just get adjusted in all the right places, but never did any exercise, never did any rehab, versus if I did get adjusted and do rehab, what's, what's the difference? Um, one is what I was doing before, and the other is what I'm doing now. Yeah. <laughs> and why do you think I did that? You learned, you met Colleen? Well, I met Colleen, before, I met Colleen before I was a chiropractor. I was a salesman when I met Colleen. 
It's because I realized I got frustrated. I was, tr I was doing that, adjusting people. I, I figured this was really my thought process. If I adjust somebody 100 times, that's probably better than any medical doctor is ever going to do for that patient. Yeah. So I would just try to get them in 100 times. And I'd do it like three times a week for the first half of the year and then once a week until they hit 100. That's what I was trying to do. But um, it frustrated me because I realized I don't even know if I'm getting them better. I would have patients come back and say, hey, I'm great. And I'd have other patients come back and say, it was good for a couple months, but it came back. Mm. And I knew there was something missing. That's what made me start looking at this. And you know, I, I knew Colleen before I even knew what chiropractic was. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that also because you're strengthening the muscles that are going to hold the posture in place and then build that up? Well, if, yeah. if this gets twisted, then all the muscles that attach to it will have to adapt. Right. And what will do? What'll happen is some will shorten and some will lengthen. And the ones that lengthen will be causing pain. And the ones that shorten become weak. So what we started figuring out, that's what upper cross and lower cross syndrome is. It's you have tight muscles and weak muscles because of distortion of the spine. And what that leads to is more distortion of the spine. Mm. Yeah. You sometimes have muscles that tighten. Let's say you, you're working out and you screw up a muscle. Can it be the reverse, too, where you screw up the muscle, which then screws up the bones? Well, there's a couple assumptions there. Number one is you're assuming I work out. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, 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 not you personally. Other people have. Can you injure a muscle and cause the problem or cause the problem and injure the muscle? Yes, both work. Okay, so sometimes you would have to fix the muscles first in order to fix the We do them all at the same time. We do them all at the same time. Yeah, I mean, unless there's a really acute injury, then right. we have to, but that's a small percentage of the population. Unless Most people spasming so you can't even get to that. Yeah, you got to realize most people that come in to any type of physical medicine practice, whether it's orthopedic, chiropractic, neurology, physiatry, or physical therapy, is chronic degenerative arthritis, not acute. And what happens is when you get somebody with an acute injury, it's because they injured a chronic problem. <coughs> did you have a question? Or did I answer it? So in the joint injections, not stem cell, just the other types of joint injections, do they actually do anything other yep. than Okay, picture this. There's the joint, right? SI joint. And you're looking at it from the side. There's actually a capsule there that holds fluid in there. So when you walk, one of the reasons these bones move is they're lubricated and they're able to move. And that capsule is stretching, right? right? If you injure it and it develops scar tissue, then it doesn't move. What will happen is when people come into a chiropractor's office, a lot of times the x-ray will look like one side is lower than the other side, right? You could actually draw a measurement off of it like that and measure it. Um, that's not that they were born that way, although that's possible. Most of the time, it's because they're stuck in that position. Mm -hmm. See, if I had somebody stand up and take an x-ray and I'd say, all right, put your left foot forward, it would show up like that. <coughs> it rocks into, it's called nutation, counter nutation, nutation, counter nutation. So when you stand, we always tell them, shoes off, flat feet on the floor, stand nice and tall, take the x-ray. And if it comes out perfectly level, we go, that's a perfect person. That's the third one in the last 45 years. <laughs> But if it's not, they're stuck in some degree of this. So when you inject that joint, you're putting fluid into the joint. You're actually going in. And when you look at it, this bone is actually on top from the back of this one. And you're going in from an angle like that. And you can actually go right in, inject the fluid. It swells it up. It puts fluid in there. And there's instant motion in that joint. And what we found is if we adjust the patient after we do that, those people that are really tough to adjust, all of a sudden are easier to adjust. Mm -hmm. Mike, did you say nutation? Nutation. N-U-T-A-T-I-O-N? Yes. Is that how you spell it? I don't know how to spell it. That's how you say it. Nutation. <laughs> so nutation is going forward and the pelvis rocks backwards, and counter-nutation is going backwards and I rocks forward. I thought you were saying mutation. I thought like mutation, counter-mutation. Mutation? Counter-mutation. Counter -mutation. <laughs> 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 we got to wrap. We got to wrap. One, Last one. So, so the whole purpose of doing the joint injection Stretch the capsule, lubricate the joint, stretch the capsule, break adhesions in the capsule. I've been explaining it correctly. Good deal. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye.